All right, once again, welcome to the Astronomy at Home Storytime from the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. Today we're going to be reading Zoo in the Sky, written by Jacqueline Mitten and illustrated by Christina Ballett. And we have a very special treat today because we're actually joined today by the author of this book, Jacqueline Mitten. And um, I just want to introduce Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline, do you want to wave to everybody? Hello, everyone. Hi. And, and hello from England, which is where I am. <laughs> yeah, she's joining us from Cambridge in England. So what time is it there, Jacqueline? Oh, it's hello. about... Hello. It's about seven o'clock in the evening. Wow, so here I'm, I'm in San Francisco in California and it's 11 a.m. So it's a different time where she is in England. Um, and we're so happy that you were able to join us today, Jacqueline. So um, Jacqueline is, has studied astronomy and she has also written many books, including some children's books and the one that we're going to read today. So she's... She's going to um, read the introduction and then I will read the rest of the book. And then after reading, we might have time for a couple of questions if you want to ask her any. So I'm going to go back to um, putting that, those illustrations up on the screen. I just wanted everyone to be able to see Jacqueline's face. So here we are reading Zoo in the Sky. And this is the title page. It's Zoo in the Sky, a Book of Animal Constellations. And I'm going to let Jacqueline now read the introduction. Just before I read you the introduction, I'd just like to say um, how happy I am to be here to talk to you all. And, um, you know, um, I still get a big thrill every time I go outside and it's a dark night and a clear night and I can see those stars twinkling away and I always think still it's magic. I've always thought that and then I think about the people long ago who used to look up at the sky and invent the stories and give names to the stars and the patterns that they saw. You know people have been doing that for thousands and thousands of years and uh, telling each other stories and using the sky like a kind of picture book. So I wanted to put that, that to those pictures into a book. And uh, I thought about all those animals that there are in the sky. And that's how I came to make this picture book with Christina. So I'm going to start with the introductory bit. This is near, it goes with these pictures here. Imagine, Hi. you can see the sun just setting. So when the sun sets, darkness falls. The stars appear one by one. Then the sky turns into a picture puzzle. What's hiding in the patterns of stars? Some people say they can only see squares and squiggles and lines and loops. But imagine hard and the sky comes to life. The star patterns make a, a wing here, a tail there, a twinkling eye, even a scorpion Hello. stinger. Hello. I watch us long, long ago, imagined a whole zoo of animals. The nighttime sky. Thank you, Jacqueline. So now I'm going to read about some of those animals in the sky. And these are words that Jacqueline wrote. And um, there's some beautiful illustrations. And I'm, I'll hold up the book afterwards, but I just wanted to let you know that we don't have the words on the screen because we wanted to make sure you could really see the details in these beautiful images. All right, so here's our first animal in the sky. 
the great bear quietly pads her way around the North Pole of the sky. Every day she makes the trip. Two bright stars across her back point straight to Polaris, the North Star. Hanging off Polaris by his tail, the little bear swings around behind her. You won't see bears quite the same anywhere else. Real live bears don't have long tails. Countless stars light the Milky Way. Along this silvery path with wings outstretched flies the swan. On July and August nights, he soars from east to west across the sky. It takes him from dusk till dawn. His eye gleams with a twin star, yellow and blue, called Albirio. He needs a good eye to keep a sharp lookout. The cunning fox runs beneath him, looking for his dinner. The scorpion has a nasty sting in his tail. Beware as he scuttles across the Milky Way. His tail is curved around and he is waving his fearsome claws. Antares, a blood red star, glows at his heart. But the wolf nearby is not afraid. After all, he is not such a friendly creature himself. Leo, the lion, is king of the beasts and lord of the sky. In February and March, he looks down from a throne high up in the heavens. Stars in his mane shine like jewels in a crown. His brightest star lies close to his heart. The star's name is Regulus, which means the little king. Charging through the zodiac, here comes the bull. Head down, horns thrust forward, Taurus is ready to toss the twins. But they are safe, always on the other side of the Milky Way. The bull glowers with a brilliant red eye, the star Aldebaran. A whole cluster of stars is scattered around his nose. The Pleiades huddle behind his shoulder. These starry sisters are not afraid. They know he never looks back. This one's one of my favorites. The great dog is chasing the hare, but knows he can never catch it. This dog is a splendid star-studded creature. His brightest star, Sirius, outshines all others in the night sky. Sirius means scorching one, a good name for a white hot star. But spot it low, but spot it low in the sky and Sirius flashes all the colors of the rainbow like a diamond glinting in sunlight. Deep in the southern sky, the glittering goldfish swims alongside where the good ship Argo sails an ocean of stars. The flying fish gives chase in fun soaring out of the waves. Now take care, he warns, we must not get caught. But the fish are safe in their starry sea. They will never be anyone's dinner. The whale is the greatest of all living creatures. He is one of the largest in the sky too. A monstrous size, he is sometimes called the sea monster. On the whale's back, you find Mira, the marvelous star. See how red it glows by his fin. Mira keeps dimming till it disappears. Then little by little, it brightens once more. 
about a year later it's back, bright as ever, only to fade all over again. Wow. A zoo without beer birds would never do. In the sky, there's a whole flock parading by the South Pole. Tails on display, the proud peacock and the bird of paradise show off to anyone who watches. The toucan's glory is his beak, studded with an orange star. The crane appears at them, uh, excuse me, the crane peers at them all, stretching his long neck. Red and blue stars shine on his back. Oh, wow. The long, scaly body of the crimson-eyed dragon coils around the North Pole of the heavens. Take care, he might breathe fire. You won't find a dragon like him in an ordinary zoo. But the starry sky is magic, and one fine sparkly night, who knows, you just might fall under its spell. So that is our story. And I wanna just hold up this book for you. So I'm gonna stop sharing the pictures. So this is a really beautiful book and the photos of the pages didn't quite capture it. You can see that it's kind of silvery in the stars. And here's the lion inside. And the reason we didn't put the words on the pages this time is because it's they're such nice long illustrations. We didn't want to make them too small. And I just wanted to point out that if you get a copy of this book, there's some more information in the back all about the starry sky if you want to learn more. And there are also a couple of maps of the sky of the north sky and the southern, the northern sky and the southern sky. So showing you what stars you can see. I live in the northern hemisphere and I think most people do here, but I saw that we have some friends joining from Argentina too. So they see the stars in the southern sky. So I just wanna say, Jacqueline, thank you so much for this lovely book and letting us share it with our friends here. I even have the book. You really liked it? Yeah. Oh, good. And I'm gonna, I wanna invite you friends, Jacqueline can stay for a few more minutes and if you have any questions for her, she'd be happy to answer them. She's the one who wrote those words in that book and worked with the illustrator to make those beautiful illustrations. Anyone have any questions for Jacqueline? Do I see, was that a hand raise, David and Peter? No. Okay, go ahead, what's your question? How did she, how did, how did Jacqueline see the bull? Cause me and mom, my mom and my brother can see and we can see the bull, but never on our, on our, um, constellation projector but not the twins hmm. ah well uh, have you been looking out in the real night sky for, for the bull yeah we well yes yeah. right well yeah. it's yeah. not too difficult to find um if you uh because there's a an incredibly bright red star in the bull called aldebaran and that's easy to pick out. And then there's a, the brightest cluster of stars in the sky called the Pleiades, or it's sometimes called the Seven Sisters. And that's not too difficult to find. <clears throat> and that's in the constellation of the bull as well. So if you can find this really bright red star and you can find the Seven Sisters, then you know you're looking at the constellation of the bull. And there's another two bright stars that kind of make a, a V shape. So that's those mark his horns. Um, but finding your way around the sky is something that you have to do with a little bit of practice. You start out with one of the constellations that you do know, and you can always recognize it. Like 
I mean, it's not a, he's not an animal, a hum, it's only a human animal, but one of the constellations that people can easily find is Orion the Hunter. And um, quite often you can make, follow lines of stars from a pattern like that that you know, or maybe from the Great Bear, because there's a pattern in the Great Bear, which is uh, the, the Big Dipper, and that one's easy to find. And then we do what you call star hopping. <laughs> you can follow the line of stars and that will make you, um, show you how to get from one constellation to another. Okay. And if you've got a little star map to help you and um, uh, somebody, uh, a grown up to help you, that's the way to get started. Yeah, thank you, Jacqueline. Yeah, it's fun to learn your way around the sky. Campbell, do you have a question? I see your hand is raised. Let's unmute. All right, I, go ahead, what's your question? I have the book. Oh, look, Campbell has your book, Jacqueline. I can't see Campbell, so. Many, many, many years. Oh, yeah. that's many, so many years. Campbell has it, had your book it. for many years. She's holding it up right now. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing that, Campbell. Let's oh, all right. I've got the gallery view now. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> I can see. Uh, how about, Bo I see Bodhi, you have your hand raised. Do you want to ask a question of Jacqueline? How did I see a bear in the sky? How do we see a bear in the sky? What's, what's that? How do you see a bear in the sky? Yes. Yes. Well, First of all, you have to have a lot of imagination <laughs> uh, because the pattern of the uh, the pattern of the stars doesn't look all that much like a bear, actually, unless you've got a very very dark sky. Now, in a very dark sky, there are some fainter stars where you can actually make out the the paws of the of the bear and so on. But if you want to find the great bear. It's fairly easy because you can, um, uh, I think you're helping me there because you need to look for the North Star, the Pole Star, and you've got your arrow just on that a moment ago, <laughs> uh, right in the tail of the little bear there. Yeah. Now the, the, little, the, the little bear is um, not so bright as the great bear, but on a nice clear night, that also makes a little kind of pan shape. It's called the Little Dipper. Uh, but once you've found the North Star, then uh, it's quite easy to find the Big Dipper. I don't know whether you can outline the Big Dipper uh, with your, um, uh, you can probably just, uh, there it is, yes. Because this constellation, this picture shows some of the fainter stars as well, but, the, but we've got the, we've got the, um, the dipper shape as well. Yeah, and the big dipper, you lots of imagination. <laughs> yes, and the Big Dipper, it, when you're first learning to find things in the sky, the Big Dipper is a good one to learn because it's always going to be in the night sky somewhere every night um, for those of us who live in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and yes. so um, that's a good one to learn how to find. And even in a city where we have a lot of light pollution, we can still pick out the Big Dipper. So um, we, have, we have to remember that the sky is always turning over our head. So the sky doesn't look the same on different nights or at different times of the year. Um, so if you don't see a constellation you want at one time of the year, it might, or when you happen to go outside, it might be because it's visible at another time of night or at another time of the year. So. Um, you perhaps need to get a bit of help uh, to find out which constellations are visible at the time when you go out. These days, you can get very nice um, apps on a smartphone that help you with that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then there are also those star maps like the one in the back of your book, where once you get to know your way around a little bit, you can use these to learn more and find more constellations. Yeah. I also see that Rafisk has a, his hand raised up. Hi, I have some camera issues, but I have a question. Mm -hmm. What constellations are hard to find? 
I didn't. Well, I, didn't, I think some of the, he asked what constellations are hard to find? Oh, I think the simple answer to that is the fainter ones. Now, um, there are 88 constellations altogether all over the sky. If you live in the northern part of the Earth, then you're, there are going to be constellations in the south that you will never see unless you travel to the south, uh, a country in the south. Um, but um, some of the main constellations date back many thousands of years, but then people thought that they needed to fill in with the places where there weren't constellations with new ones that they invented and they're not so old. So people began to invent much, much fainter constellations and, and, and to fill and to fill in to fill in the spaces. <laughs> so uh, those are the ones that tend to be more difficult to find. But I think all the ones in um, Zoo in the Sky are um, quite are not too hard to find if you're in the right part of the world. If you're in, you'll need to be in the southern part of the world to be able to see some of those bird constellations and fish constellations. But otherwise, they sh they're quite, they should be quite easy. And we actually have uh, Amelie from Argentina joining us today, and she's invited us to all go and see their constellations there. So that I hope, terrific. <laughs> yeah, I hope one day to be able to do that. I had been hoping actually to come and watch the eclipse later this year, but that looks like that's not going to happen. Uh, um, but I hope you could enjoy it. <laughs> um, I think maybe we have time for one more question from Jacqueline. For Jacqueline, anyone have a question? I see Ada is raising her hand. And don't forget, we also have a little activity if you guys are interested after we have our questions. Ada, what did you want to say? That's the question, Ada. So, that's the mom. I know. So I know about um, Cassiopeia, and um, also I saw Cassiopeia in the book, and also then I know about Betelgeuse and the other red star. Oh, Aldebaran. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there's also a red star in Terry's that yes. they talked about in the book. Yes. I'm it sorry. sounds like Ada's been learning a lot about the stars in the sky and learning how to find them. That's impressive. Of course, Cassiopeia is a, um, a, a person, a, a, a myth, uh, a queen in mythology, and so is Orion is a person in mythology. Um, I have actually written another book that's all, the, all those stories in it. <laughs> so maybe another time <laughs> we can have a look at that. Um, uh, it's called Once Upon a Starry Night. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, another one of your books. I have a question. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, is that, I also see Sammy raising their hand. Well, I think, I think it's time to move on to our activity. So let's say thank you so much, Jacqueline, for joining us. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. you. Well, it's been a pleasure meeting you all, and I hope you really enjoyed the book. It's been lovely for me. I'm going to say good night now. Good night, people. Night. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye, and thank you for joining bye. us where it's so late. Thank you, Jacqueline. And um, speaking of red stars, I wanted to talk to you about a red star you can see in the sky tonight. Um, if you could go right back here, it's in the south and low in the sky. So it might be a little bit hard to see, especially if you're in bright city lights. But I wanted to show you this star for the, it's right here. This is Antares and it is red, 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 red. But you can't see that in that picture because of all of this haze on the bottom and also because it's from a computer program and not from the sky. But that's what it will look like if you um, go out into the sky. And I picked this star to talk about because you can see this whether you're in the North Hemisphere or the South Hemisphere. You can see it in the sky um, right now if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and a little bit um, you can see it um, 
in the south as well. So um, can you go to the next slide, Anna? So we had you guys, um, I don't sure if everybody got the chance to do this because not everyone has a printer, but we have this um, sheet uh, where you can look at the constellation. Yeah, this is a constellation that um, it, the ancient Greeks called it Scorpius, but there have been as many stories about this constellation as there have been groups of people in the world because humans have been making stories about the sky for a long time. So because this star is so bright red, it's fascinated stargazers throughout history. And so the Boorong natives of Australia can see the red tail of a parrot in that red star in Aries. And the Chinese and Japanese cultures see a heart. There's an Indian legend that calls this star the eldest one. And ancient Egyptians saw a flock of birds in this area. So those are some of the legends that are told around the world about the star, that star Antares. And so if we go to the next page, I'm gonna just show you the close up of the, the stars that are in this area of the sky. And what you can do is write your own story about it or have a grown up help you make up a story about it. And I wanna tell you some things that you can think about while you're making your story. So what many cultures did is took things that they valued or thought was very important and made that story into the things they saw in the sky. So you can think about something that you think is important. Maybe it's a, a value or um, a guideline that your parents tell you about how is the right way to be nice to other people. Or maybe you can think about maybe an important event that happened um, or something that's happened in your life or your family's life that was meaningful to you. So that's one thing you can think about. What type of story do you want to tell? And then another thing you can do is look at some of the stars are bigger and brighter than the other ones. So you can use those stars sort of to anchor your picture. And by anchoring your picture, I mean it's easier to use those stars to connect the dots kind of. So take a look at some of these brighter stars. These two stars here at the end might mean something. For example, some people see that as the bottom stinger of the scorpion, and some people see that as the barb of a fish hook that's up in the sky. So I really would invite you to take a look at these stars, and if you have a story that you would like to tell, you can write it down on a piece of paper and please, please, please send it in to us. We'd be happy to share it with you at story time next time. Speaking, Speaking of, of which, next time. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll, we can hear from all of you in a minute, but I just want to let you know what's coming up next time. So next time we're going to read the same book we read for our very first story time, and that's Breakfast Moon which is a book that Teresa and I created together with um, some of our other coworkers at the ASP and the children's book author Meg Gower and the illustrator David Barker. So we're doing a special story time next month that's part of the Bay Area Science Festival. And so instead of on a Monday, we're going to have it on a Wednesday, October 21st, but at the same time, 11 a.m. And um, we don't have a sign up yet, but you can find out more info by going to our webpage. It'll be up there soon, um, astrosociety.org slash storytime. And again, like Teresa said, we'd love it if you send us your um, constellation stories, take a picture of your paper and you can send it to us at storytime at astrosociety.org and we will share those at a future story time. Um, and um, we hope that you'll be able to join us next month for this special edition of Storytime, um, where we'll be reading Breakfast Moon. So I'm going to 
Um, we're going to turn off the recording, but if you want to stay, we'd love to hear any more questions or comments or if you want to share your stories. So see you next time for our story time.